He sounds genuine, guys. Hey guys, this is Jules with True Crime Reactions. Disclaimer. Everything stated in this video is my opinion and my opinion only. And just like everything else in these cases we discuss here on this channel, everything is alleged. Okay, so I got sent a timestamp to a live that Cluminati was doing yesterday on September the 14th. And it was whenever Chris Proudfoot jumped on her live stream. Now, I do want to thank the viewer, Janelle, that sent me this because this was interesting. I don't think we've heard Chris Proudfoot really sound like this before. Now, it's been a super, 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 super long time since they've come out and actually spoken online anywhere. Now, I know that they've been keeping in contact with Clue simply because she was in court with them. I don't speak to her. I don't speak to none of those people that are doing any of all of this stuff. I just know that I saw her sitting in court with Chris and Katie. Therefore, they have to be still in connection, especially since Cluminati has also been a really, really big part of all of the blip boards and all the billboard stuff that's been going on. So they've definitely been keeping in contact, at least for that kind of stuff. That being said... This is the first time I feel like he's been online and spoken in months, in a months, at least from what I can remember. And it doesn't surprise me that he jumped up on clues because he would be comfortable over there. So maybe what we're hearing here is Chris in a more comfortable environment where he doesn't feel so defensive because I've listened to the arguments that he's had online with several other creators from months ago. And in, in this clip, this is not the whole conversation. It's, it's basically his thank yous and talking about how like the big fight between him and Terry Lynn, I think that's how you say her name, Terry Lynn, that, I mean, they've like hugged and he's said, thank you for everything that you're, you're doing. It's not personal. Like this is a really good conversation. Okay. I, I want to show it to you guys because the viewer that sent it to me was right. Th this is something that does need to be shared out there because it's a good message. Now, I had a commenter ask me why I was getting in the middle of it whenever I came out here and posted what Steve Fisher was claiming on Twitter. And it's not me getting in the middle of it to come out here and put facts out there. Me getting in the middle of it would be me trying to join on these channels and try to engage in the drama and all the crazy stuff. And that's not what I'm doing. I, I'm taking the facts and putting the facts out when there's facts to put out and nothing else. So if that's getting in the middle of it, then yeah, cool. I dived in. This is normal programming for me. So let's just go ahead and continue. Now, Steve Fisher, as far as I know so far, has not been retained by them. But since he was in Tennessee, he did go and search the area himself, not like officially, but just to go out there and take a look at the area. And he posted a bunch of really good videos on his Twitter account of how it looks, different places that he saw, and his just ideas of where if Sebastian did run away, because again, one of my theories is that this is a version of what happened with Alicia Navarro, that she, there's a possibility that he met somebody online and this was a planned situation. That's very, very possible. Now, I will always hold my questions for Katie because she was the adult that was there. And there's a couple things about her story that have changed over time. And I don't know if that's a just because coincidence or not. So I'm going to hold my questions for Katie until there's answers. But there's having opinions and having questions. And then there's what a bunch of these cray crays are out here doing. See, that's not me. That's not me getting in the middle of it. If somebody needs another example of what that doesn't look like. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and play these little clips. There's going to be a link in the description box if you want to go over to Twitter and take a bigger look at the videos and the information that Steve has on what he has determined from being at the location and taking a look at it himself. So let me go ahead and play this. I know it's been a while since uh, we've actually talked to anybody and been in the public eye. Um, I caught wind earlier about your conversation about the billboards and, and things like that. I personally 
on behalf of me and Katie wanted to come up and just tell everybody say thank you uh, for everything that everybody's done and the work that you guys are putting forth, helping find Sebastian, keeping his name public. Um, it truly means a lot. I know, like I said, we haven't been out too much in the private eye. We've kind of been doing some things behind the scenes quietly, working with law enforcement, doing what they've asked. But just wanted to reach up and say, hey, thanks to all those who have contributed and continuously prayers and thoughts about Sebastian. When you walk up and honestly, I mean, like I told you this, I was like, dude, you could, you could r really ruffle me up. You know what I mean? But there, it wasn't, I man. It was just, Hey dude, there's no grudge. It's about finding Sebastian. And you know, it's, it's nice to meet you. It's a pleasure to put a face with the name and you did that with everybody there. And so I think everybody, you know, we, uh, people seem to have this narrative that they have no freaking clue or have a general understanding about you, man, or, or Katie. I mean, if anything, what I would push out there for any and all creators, um, truth, clue, there's, and there's a few more out there that kind of do the same thing. Push, push the drama out. If you just keep everything away from it and just focus on just the basic facts, what law enforcement has, what the situation is for what it is and focus on that and just do some searching for Sebastian and they're searching in multiple ways. I mean, no, not everybody's going to be out there physically tracing across the, uh, the landscapes, which that's not for everybody. I completely understand that. Some are great at it. Some may have some disabilities that prevent them from doing that. Some have a lot more intelligence behind computers and keyboards trying to figure out things, which is amazing. I'm not going to sit here and tell what people should and shouldn't think. That's not how I operate. That's not the way I was taught. Everybody's opinions are just that. They're their opinions. You know, different points of view are always welcomed, but just not so much of the drama. Um, because I know it bogs the case down with law enforcement, with everybody, and it weighs heavy, heavy on all parties involved. I mean, th let's not forget something here. Yeah. Seth is the parent. He is the biological father to Sebastian. He loves his son. Yep. Katie loves her son. I love Sebastian. But that stress is not an added factor, which any of us wish upon anybody. And we just ask that people let's take a step back from drama, push it away, deal with that stuff later. Let's just all focus on finding Sebastian. I was guilty, obviously, um, of my opinion was you, Katie, from the start, right? And started looking at this, and, and it goes back to, like I said, the whole general conversation and when Seth would come out and do the video. But you still told me, hey, look, man, the, the thing is, your opinions, that's your opinion. But what, it, what you need to do, Stephen, is stop bashing all the parents, Seth, Katie, myself, like there's no need for that. And, you know, it's, uh, it's something that is, I will say it's been hard given the, um, direct flybacks I get over there. So it's easy to get caught up in that back and forth. And that's what truth is trying to, you know, truth was explained to me. It's like, man, just let it happen. Let it go. And kind of same thing you said, let it like, they're going to say whatever, just let it go. Don't give it no mind. Be respectful of all individuals, you know, cause y'all are the parents. And so it's something that I've, I've got to work on better myself, to be honest with you, especially given the situation at hand now. Um, but I want to say, appreciate that advice and, and same to truth, man, with the advice and clue. I mean, clue, I mean, you, you look at Cletus, man, they, they have all been legit when it comes to like, Hey, look, man, just keep doing you do it this way. It's not worth your time when it comes to these people are going to think whatever the hell they want, no matter what, you're not going to change that opinion. That's their opinion. That's why it is what it is. But we could do this without having to critically bash everybody. And just like I saw so the day that we all, we met you and we handed the flyers out to the barbecue and, and that crew and all that and met them. You know, I, Terry Lynn's there. That's fine. I don't hold a grudge. It's not a personal thing for me. 
That's why I walked up and said, hey, let me give you a hug. She yeah. gave me a hug. I gave her a hug. She gave Katie a hug. You know, it, it's not a personal vendetta. It's not. It's This is not about me, Katie, or Seth. This is about our 15-year-old son, Sebastian, so, and bringing him home. That's what this is about. Once everybody can focus and draw back to that, effectively, I really and truly believe that a lot of these creators could be effective. They could all come together and, and try to collaborate and make some big... I, I don't know. I'm not a, I'm not a planner, but I have an idea in my head of where we could try to get some groups, very credible and reputable groups together and try to form something to bring awareness, not just to Sebastian's case. There's so many kids every single day that are going missing that need that focus. And Katie and I can't be completely stingy and just say it's all about Sebastian. We can't. But we would love to. We love that everybody is staying focused on Sebastian. But we definitely would love everybody to just push away the negativity and just focus back on Sebastian. He's he's the important piece here. He is why we're here. I definitely want to say thank you for everything you guys do. Um, you know, there's we hear a lot of good comments, a lot of reasonable thoughts and, and, you know, appreciate all your efforts of pushing billboards. You guys did an amazing thing, just like Duchess and barbecue and, and Tammy and, and, and all those folks. I mean, there's no way we could have done that without y'all's help. And it, it truly, truly means a lot to all of us. So what do you guys think? I think he sounds genuine. And it's not surprising that he's the one coming out here because it seems like as much as we've heard about Chris Proudfoot, okay, he's not completely out of the gray area when it comes to the type of human he is. All right. We, we've heard things, we've seen things, he's admitted to things we know. All right. But him speaking for her seems to be how he protects her from things because we also know Katie's past. So it's not like I don't look at that either. All I know <laughs> is that the cops are saying that the parents' stories were vetted. That means Seth being at work at the jail on camera is affirmative. That means Chris being at work at an RV site close to his work location, somewhere closer to his work location, hours and hours away, and him having not been home for weeks and weeks and weeks, vetted, meaning affirmative. The only thing that I have, and I've mentioned this in the last video, is how can you vet Katie's story when there's no cameras to validate anything that she's claiming? The one camera that picked somebody coming out was somebody else's ring camera and the lights that Chris swears are supposed to be on 24-7 for protection above the garage were magically turned off. And that's whenever my radar went off on that Nancy Grace interview, because why is that something that's not consistent? Why are the lights off whenever Chris isn't home? Why can the camera not actually validate that it's Sebastian walking out of that house to drop the trash off in the trash can? There's too many questions there, and I cannot let those go until I have more answers. But I still do very much entertain the runaway theory, guys. See, that's what theorizing is. Having more than one thought and not just pointing fingers at insanity. Yeah. Okay. Let me know what you guys think down in the comments about his conversation. Now, there was more to it. I stopped it at where I stopped it because the rest of it was more, how are you and Katie doing? How are things going? It's more like emotional, personal if you guys want to go and listen to that, feel free. It's more great conversation. It, it You really do get a better feel of the way that they are now that maybe they haven't been out here letting all of this negative aggression and all this crazy energy consume them the way that Seth has. Because that stuff matters. We've talked about the water molecules, guys. We've talked about them. So that's another possibility about why we're seeing a different view, a different tone with Chris Proudfoot now than we have before and definitely versus what we've seen with Seth. Those are just things to consider. But I want to know what you guys think down in the comments. Honest opinions. 
honest opinions. If you like the way that I present this information and give my opinion, please do not forget to leave a like on your way out. Subscribe to the channel if you are not subscribed already. And don't forget to make sure that your notification bell is set to all so you don't miss any of my rants, reviews, reactions, updates, or deep dives. See y'all.